The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. as they uh, are listed is, and first and most top is the South Coast Community Chorale Concert uh, fast approaching for Saturday May 18th uh, in this building. If you're not able to attend on a Saturday evening there is also the Sunday afternoon performance at St. Thomas More over in Somerset. Um, uh, we are uh, excited to have uh, the group come in. Uh, we are hoping this afternoon we'll be uh, spending a minute uh, working out the logistics, because it is a big, big group, anybody that's been, so uh, God has got a plan, and we're going to figure that one out. Um, if there's anyone that's uh, willing to uh, put some volunteer time in on that evening, I would imagine we could use a few folks. Uh, I don't have a specific task yet, but I certainly can think of handing out programs, uh, and just generally uh, making sure people feel welcome. Selling tickets at the door. Ah, okay. I don't know how much of that they'll, the group will arrange for, but anything right. that we can help with is... It's good okay. to have people who know the building. Good. So, please. Uh, so. Hi, welcome. So. Uh, that is the top. Uh, the Leadership Council, we're already uh, keeping, making sure it's on your calendar for uh, May 19th. Uh, the Clothing and Grace Ministries, uh, I just had... I would never name names, Sherry. Um, but uh, the, the, request, the request for shoes was uh, met with some uh, effort, and that uh, is much appreciated. Um, Rita I, came to work the clothing ministry on Thursday, and she served, what, more than a dozen people? Easily, she just easily. banged through um, yeah. as many people as, as she could get through. Absolutely. So it's such a help. We have so many people who are inside who just don't have enough money to do anything other than pay their rent. And we have people who are outside who need tarps and blankets and shoes and warm yeah. clothes and um, I'm so grateful that this trip provides that for the community. So. Amen. Uh, we do let you know the Branch Community Supper uh, folks that are coming. It'll be First Congregational in their uh, uh, classic first Tuesday of the month role and uh, surprise guests, the Phantom Gourmets, will be here on Thursday. Um, let's see, uh, what else did I want to just make sure the communion offering uh, that I don't have it here is for the Baptist ministries, do I get that right? Um, uh, retired ministers, missions, missionaries and ministers, I believe. Okay, so uh, Ketley and, 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 and the crew. Uh, so, Not sure that's right. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> hang on, you have it. I, I, but we should start with missionaries. Baptist missionaries. It's for Ketley and Pierre. Yes, now we're, on, now we're all on the same page. Yes. All right, very good. Uh, so that's, that will be uh, collected at the same time as our uh, ties and offerings. Uh, are there any other announcements? Uh, if not, let's enter into worship. Together. Will you join me in the responsive call to worship that's printed in your bulletin? It comes from Psalm 103. I will read the parts in the Roman type and ask that you respond with the parts in italics. And if when you would have it, if they you would signal by standing. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord will not always accuse. Nor will God keep God's anger forever. God does not deal with us according to our sins. Nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love towards those who fear God. As far as the east is from the west. So far, God removes our transgressions from us. Our opening hymn is Gather Us In on pages 2 and 3.
but came back each time. And boy, when you put cheesecake and uh, uh, ice cream in front of her, there's no Parkinson's, there's no stopping. There's, there's no conversation, by the way. I find <laughs> I probably have had that many other times, but I realized there's not a moment I need to be worried about chatting about the week or all the things that I usually cover. When she's in that mode, it's just a and nothing. I'm surprised she doesn't pick up that bling blanket, but I, she's, she's classier than that. Uh, one more joy, and I know I can uh, share it with Lucy and Lou. Uh, down at the Narrows Center uh, last night uh, was the uh, second of two performances of Jesus Christ Superstar, put on by the uh, Little Theater of Fall River. The talent? Oh my lord. It was over the top. Uh, super, super good. That's the first time that that theater is trying to, is co uh, coordinated with uh, the Narrows venue, I believe, and I think, and they were certainly talking about that first of many. Uh, they, in the past, they had the fire barn uh, up by the uh, hospital in Charlton. They had a lot of performances there. They were at BCC once in a while, but it was wow, hard to describe. Uh, and, uh, and it was dedicated to uh, Kathy Castro yes. so, uh, and Jane. Uh, yep, and dedicated to uh, Kathy Castro, uh, who recently passed and was, I got to know her through uh, when we had a fundraiser, my only other experience with the Narrows. Uh, I know that's staggering for all the years I've been here. but uh, And Kathy interviewed us for the people that were getting uh, support, which is a marvelous job. And, She's missed, and I, yeah, I know people's hearts were heavy that she could not experience that and be there for that. And the other person was Jane. Jane, Jane. Bigelow. Jane Bigelow. Uh, so, all right, with that, are there other joys and concerns to be uh, lifted up today? Well, last week, my mother had said, uh, let's see, I said that my mother had had a heart attack, which she did. And with the care that she received at the hospital, She's home, she's doing well. As can be, be expected, I went onto Facebook this morning, we have a friend, uh, Janelle Lafon, who grew up in our neighborhood, and she was also a teacher, so my parents had gone to France with her years ago. And Janelle tra travels all around the country taking walks and whatnot. So yesterday she had uh, walked in East Providence on the bike path, and my mother liked all of her pictures, and she posted on Facebook that she had suffered a heart attack the week before, so she's getting it out into the public and she's doing well and thanks, thanks for everybody's prayers, you know what I mean? Because she's been a friend of the church and different people here know her. So I just like pass along all the good news by the grace of God. Yeah. I'm the forgetful one, your mother's name? Lorraine. 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 Joys and concerns that we'd like to share. <laughs> our leader to see. And so I will pass the mic over. Could do this all the way. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Um, I just wanted to ask for prayers for um, Steve Rodkey, um, Judy Baraclaw's husband. I know oh. that they're friends of this church, um, and we hold them in common from First Baptist in Attleboro. Um, Steve was on a bike ride um, in Taunton, and the um, bicyclist that he was riding with, um, both, both of them got hit by a car. Um, Steve got to the hospital, has some injuries, but is at home. Um, unfortunately, his companion, um, I can't remember the man's name, um, but he passed away. So if you would remember Steve and Judy, um, I know that they would very much appreciate the prayers. Come up, we lift up uh, uh, the names that we love to uh, lift up, but we also would love to see them. Uh, we lift up Sue Holland, uh, we lift up uh, Jane and Sally, uh, we lift up Esther. Uh, I don't see Elsie here, so we will mention Elsie's name, Bob and Ann uh, Moore, and uh, uh, so all that we, uh, we send out our love and uh, always pray. Let us enter into a time of prayer. Most holy Lord, with all of your beloved creation, we praise you and we rejoice in you. You are our source and our hope, our love and our life, and we are so grateful 
for the many blessings that you pour out upon us. We are grateful for all of the ministries that you give us to participate in, for the joy that they bring us, for the joy that they bring our community. We are grateful for our feeding ministry and our clothing ministry and our homeless ministry. And we are grateful for this community in which we are blessed to serve and worship you for her talent and for her heart. Lord, we come to you in joy, but we also come worried or distracted or anxious. We ask that you grant us wisdom and discernment to make our way forward with you. Help us to look at the world around us through your eyes, not with fear or anger or judgment, but to see with love and compassion and joy. Help us to incline our ear to you and to walk with you. Most holy God, we ask that you guide our decisions and lead us where you would have us go. Father, we pray for those who are hurting on this spring morning. We pray for those who, uh, for Judy and Steve, who grieve the loss of their friend. We pray, we pray that all who loved him might uh, be surrounded by people who love them and who loved him. We pray that uh, the community might come together in support around them and that they might feel your presence with them. We pray for those who are hungry. We pray for those who are still cold on our chilly nights. We pray for those who are in need. We pray for those who are afraid. Father, we lift up to you also those who are sick. We lift up uh, Sally North and Jane and Sue Holland for her health. We lift up Esther that she might continue to have health. We lift up Steve that he uh, might have continued healing. We lift up Naomi and Leon that they might have many, many more good days and not very many bad ones. We lift up praise for Lou's mom, Lorraine, and for Janelle that um, they have healed as well as they have. We ask uh, that you would continue to heal them and give them many, many more good years uh, to witness to your love. Lord, we lift up all who cannot be here physically, but who are here in spirit. We name Elsie and Don and Anne and Claudette. Grant them all healing and mercy and comfort. Lord, our God, renew us with your love and guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We offer ourselves into your care, that you might work in us and through us to the glory of your name. Amen. 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 And now as Jesus taught us to pray, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
me. We have come into his house. Snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, 
and went on his way rejoicing. May God add a blessing to the reading of the word. Thank you, Jen. So, Philip had originally been appointed by the Twelve to make sure that everybody got fed. You see, some of the widows of the time were part of the in crowd, and some of them were part of the out crowd. And some of them were getting fed uh, more consistently better than others. And the Twelve didn't want to see the, uh, oversee the distribution. They thought it would take away from their preaching. Time. And so they appointed seven deacons. Stephen is probably the one you know the best, and Philip uh, is another deacon, uh, to make sure that everyone got what they needed, that the distribution of food uh, went well. But the deacons didn't limit themselves to just feeding. They also preached, and Philip had been preaching in Samaria quite effectively. He'd been uh, healing people who needed healing and casting out demons where that was needed and he'd been baptizing peoples in Jesus people in Jesus' name and he had quite a following of men and women and that's where the Holy Spirit found him uh, and uh, sent him to uh, the road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza the wilderness road uh, where he met the Ethiopian eunuch have you ever found yourself in a wilderness? Whether an actual one or a metaphorical one. And needed someone? And in that unexpected wilderness place, have you ever found someone who built you up in the faith, who supported you when you needed it most, who affirmed the faith that was in you? Do you know what that feels like, how important that is? Philip was that person for the Ethiopian eunuch. The eunuch is unnamed in the text, but we actually know quite a bit about him. He would have been a, a very powerful person, uh, a court official to Queen Candace of Ethiopia. He would have been in charge of the queen's treasury. So a man who was politically connected, who was trusted, and who was wealthy. Look how wealthy he was. He was sitting in his own chariot that he owned. That is a sign of wealth in the ancient world. It's a sign of wealth now. <laughs> um, and he was reading a parchment scroll, which is significantly more expensive than a modern book would have been, um, because it's not made out of tree pulp, right? It's made out of scratched, out of uh, scraped and treated animal hide. Um, so scrolls are expensive. Um, both to uh, both the materials for them and the time and the work that it takes to scribe them. So he was a wealthy man, seated in his chariot, reading a parchment <coughs> scroll. And we know he had just been on pilgrimage to Jerusalem and that he had invested considerable resources in this scroll of Isaiah, one of the major prophets of long a complicated scroll. We also know that on that pilgrimage to Jerusalem, he would not have been allowed into the inner circle in the temple. Leviticus 21 tells us that no one with a defect can go into the Holy of Holies, and we're told exactly uh, that this eunuch's de uh, defect um, would have made sure that he was not able to serve uh, the food in the Holy of Holies. But even more than that, Deuteronomy 23 tells us uh, that a eunuch shall not enter the assembly of the Lord. So not just the Holy of Holies, but the assembly of the Lord. A eunuch may not enter the assembly of the Lord. So this man who was rich, who was powerful, who was politically connected, still had a gender identity problem. He didn't meet the gender uh, specifications of the ancient world that would have excluded him from the assembly of the faithful. Ancient Hebrew religion had strict gender roles, and anyone who didn't fit cleanly into one of those boxes was not welcome. 
So this powerful and wealthy man had been on pilgrimage to the holy city of Jerusalem, to the temple dedicated to our Lord, where they would have prohibited him from full participation because he did not fit their rules about what a man should be. You know what that feels like? I mean, not to be a eunuch. <laughs> But do you know what it feels like to be okay in some areas of your life, but to feel in other areas like you will never fit? Amen. Like you won't fit into society, like you won't be accepted, like you won't be invited, like you won't be included. It feels terrible. So he's alone in his chariot, studying that expensive scroll when God directs Philip to him. And I love that the first thing he does is he invites Philip up into his chariot. Did you notice? They don't just like stop and stay in one place and like sit on the ground or something. They go for a chariot ride together. And they journey together for a while. What a gift we are to each other. When we choose to open ourselves to the Spirit, when we choose to share this faith journey together, when we spend that time together walking, uh, or riding our chariots, if we should have them uh, together from one place to another. Church, it's important that you hear that we are not in this alone. We're not meant to do this faith journey alone. Sometimes I'm perfectly fine all by myself. My little dog in my pretty house, and I can be perfectly happy. But if I just stayed there all by myself, hold up, something inside me would die. I need to be connected to the rest of the body of God, yes, to the rest of Jesus' body. We need each other. We need these communities. We are here to support and love each other. If someone tells you, well, I don't go to church because I can find God up on a mountaintop, I'm sure that you can find God up on a mountaintop. God created this universe, including the mountains. The sunsets are beautiful. You can find God by yourself on that mountaintop. But if you don't come back down off that mountaintop and get into the community and get your life involved with other people's lives, you will be missing a core part of what it is to live your life in God with Christ Jesus. We are not ever meant to do this alone. Amen, church? Amen. So the Ethiopian eunuch had his expensive scroll of scripture. He had the education to read it. He had the time to read it. And he had the heart to read it. But he still needed that affirmation, that sharing of understanding in community, that communion with them. Uh, together with Philip. And so as they traveled uh, on their journey together, as they took their chariot ride, they found uh, some water, and the eunuch says, look, there's water. What's to prevent me from being baptized? Now, what would you say if someone said to that? But that's not my role. The pastor's going to do that for you. We're not in the church. It's a public thing. It's, I don't know. I can't do it by myself. You're a foreigner. You don't, even, you don't even belong here. You're a stranger, right? Um, plus, you don't fit all the gender roles that I've been trained that you're supposed to have. There are lots of things that Philip could have said that he could have put up as a barrier to say, well, actually, there's a list of things that would prevent you from being baptized. Does Philip do any of that? Philip doesn't throw up any barriers at all. God has been at work in Ethiopian eunuch, and Philip just affirms the work that God has been doing, offers a public recognition of what God has been doing in that Ethiopian's heart. He affirms him, and he uplifts him, just as we are all called to affirm and to uplift each other in community. Not his ethnicity, not his gender identity, not his wealth. Nothing is a barrier between this man and God's love. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Amen, church. Amen. Amen.
On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread. And after he blessed it, he broke it, saying, This is my body broken for you. As oft as ye eat of it, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after 
after the meal, we are told that our Lord Jesus took the cup, and after he blessed it, he poured it out for them. saying, This is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. As oft as ye drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Yeah. 